I asked for your weirdest, wildest, wackiest, funniest, zaniest, most heartwarming D&D stories, and boy howdy did y'all come through. <laughs> Hi friends, I am Jesse Jurdak. You know me from this channel. Uh, I am a costumer, I am a D&D streamer, I am a maker, and a general purpose Swiss Army nerd. Um, this is my dear friend, Cal. Cal Hi. Oh, I talked over you. Cal is an educator, a... I think he's a pop culture nerd, and uh, a generally good person. He's also one of the funniest people I've ever met, and I text him a lot, and he texts funny things back to me, and then I take the funny things Cal says and put them on my Twitter, and everybody thinks I'm clever. So like I was saying, uh, Cal and I asked for your tabletop stories, and y'all sent them. Like a lot. Like a lot, a lot. So... So Cal took half and I took the other half and we selected some stories that we wanted to like read to the other and then we're going to also read them to you in the process. So neither of us have read the other's stories so what you're going to see are genuine reactions from each of us as we hear the cute or horrific things that have been sent our way. You're going to see some spicy takes probably. You're going to see some like heart touching reactions. He's piping hot. Piping hot. He is the master of the piping hot spicy take. Kalman, are you ready to rock and roll? I'm always ready to rock and roll. You are going to love this. You ready, buddy? Hold on, I made you a theme song. What? I asked for stories, cute and shady. Then Cal came over, tell me maybe. <laughs> tell me maybe. <laughs> Yeah, I, I was. I don't know why I was. Uh, I was like, "There's not going to be a pun here, is there?" And a, who am I talking to? So, who wants to go first? Do you want to go first, or you want me to go first? Do we want to start with a, a nice one, or start with a, a, a spooky one, or a, a mean one? Due to my editing, these people are not going to know how many I read. They may think there's just one story. I mean, this one's kind of a fun one. But, fun is good. You know. Yeah. Do we want to like. Uh, Here's a nice one. Here's some mean stuff. And then we're going to finish with a funny one. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Do I say who sent this one in? So yeah, I'd start from like, so this is a, uh, this is from, um, I just wrote down like a generic first name. You know, I can, I'll beep it if they don't want to be listened to named. Uh, I, I'll just not say it. All right. No, so this person it. sent in a, a fun short story here. Uh, they just beat in a boss fight. Our group started to travel towards our next destination when a wolf appeared at the edge of the tree line. The wolf stared at us, then turned and walked into the forest. Instinctively, I didn't trust the wolf. That's, yeah, you don't, that's that's definitely DM bait, right? Like every time, I, I do that to you guys. Cal plays in my campaign. Um, our druid instinctively trusts the wolf. Yeah, our, our druid is just playing herself. Um, and if, if our druid <laughs> saw a wolf... <laughs> at the tree line and it just kind of looked longingly at her and then just sullenly walked into the forest um she would follow it but anyway so in this one though their druid was all, always tried to befriend every animal they encountered uh even ones we were actively fighting in a coliseum so we followed the wolf into the trees of course it was a trap and we were quickly surrounded by a pack of wolves yeah um yeah obviously we, we i mean that's that's uh for, for, all right, I'm, I'm, I'm not going to shit on their DM, but I'm going to be like, I, I mean, I see what you're doing, DM, and uh, you got better in you. <laughs> I think this was, I think that we'll, we'll learn some things about where they were in this campaign. So here's where it gets fun, according to this. Okay. Uh, so I was playing a wild magic sorcerer, awesome. and I triggered a wild magic surge. I actually love wild. Do you like wild magic? I love... Oh. To our DM's delight, I finally rolled the level 3 fireball centered on myself. <laughs> I took out all of the wolves, but I also downed the entire party. All of us were dying from laughter at the chaos of it. Thankfully, our DM was kind enough to have an NPC come revive the party. Oh, I love that. I love wild magic um, sorcerers a lot. Um, I know, like a lot of people are like, "That's eh, chaos." I'm like, "That's what makes it wonderful." I, I don't like wild magic. <laughs> I played a wild magic sorcerer. I try and make it work, and it. I never get to do the magic. Does it just not come up? Well, it just never happens. A lot of it and, is like up to the DM, though. 
Well, so the DM has to remember to be like, roll, on the, roll the wild magic surge. And you have to roll a nat one to then get to roll on the table. And the one time I got it, it was like a beard of feathers. And I was like, that was pretty cool. But I'm still now just, you know, like we were level four or five. So there wasn't a lot going on at the time. Uh, and I just wanted the fireball to kill all of us. <laughs> that's what you want. <laughs> that's, all, that's, all, that's all I wanted here. And I'm so happy that this person... Actually got to... Mm -hmm. Uh, yeah, and I guess, like, as a player, if, like, you had TPK'd to that, I actually, I, I don't know, if, would I be mad? I wouldn't be mad. Not, not, well, alright, hold on. How, how long did I spend on my backstory? Well, so, it, like, they said they'd just done, like, a boss battle, so they're a couple, you they're know, hurt. I mean, they're hurt, uh -huh. they might be a couple sessions in, they might be ten sessions in. That's just... I, I, that's that's funny to me. I like it. Um, you're, if, if, if your character in my campaign dies, please roll a wild magic sorcerer. I will never do that. You, you, no, uh, I don't know. Uh, I'll be a fighter. That's fine. Be human, human fighter. fighter. Yeah. Human fighter. <laughs> um, is there more? That's this one. This is a short one. All right. I'm going to do one. All right. I'm going to do a story. How many browser windows do I need to have open? When I... When I... When I... I can't sleep at night, but if I take a nap, I can sleep. So I have to justify every night of sleep. It's like, I'm just going to take a nap for eight hours in my bed. This is... Mine are all... Now you'll see. Mine are fun and cute and have wild magic surges. Mine are also cute. I mean, depending on... Okay, I'm going I'm to start. Um, <clears throat> I, have, I mainly have ones that are, like, really uncomfortable. So I'm going to read you those. That's why you're like, these are fun! This is good D&D! And that's... It, right? But, like, everyone's D&D game has the, like... Yeah, and then we, like, taught them the power of friendship and also married them. And then the horse mauled a man to death. And the death. horse, yeah, stomped a man to death. That's D&D. <laughs> like, it's that's supposed it. to be cute, and then it's weird and scary. Um, okay, this one is from Ryan Hunt. I know this is one. That I probably... This looks familiar. Thank God. Um, so the, thank you for sending in a video, Ryan. Is that a video? I keep calling these stories videos. Oh, I would have been like, that's awesome! This person were, like, narrated it. Didn't have a theme song for you like I did. So this was... Uh, thank you again, Ryan, for sending in a story. I appreciate it. Um, Ryan starts. So this was maybe three, four years ago. Um, I must have been around 18 or 19 at the time, but that's not really relevant. Uh, so I'll probably edit that out, Ryan. My friend at the time, who was a forever DM, would always write down sessions for me and a few of our other friends to play, um, which is nice of them. Um, they would always start off really, really well because he'd put time and effort and energy into the first session, but never really planned anything further. Um, so he would devolve into one of these three scenarios. Scenario one is the best outcome. Uh, he'd just make things up as he goes, and we'd move on and have fun. Scenario two, uh, that's a decent outcome. He'd write things up mid-session, so like while they're playing, um, and the pacing is a little fucked up and it feels terrible, but it, they're still having some fun. Uh, scenario three, this is the worst outcome, and it's also the most common, which is not great. So, so before we go on, so like, the DM would come to session and he would write up a really strong like first half of a session yep. mm -hmm. and then just kind of mm, just phone it in just or, just or figure it out right sounds like the guy was pretty good on maybe pretty good at improv sometimes uh, figuring it out you're gonna have to tell us ryan because i don't know if he was good at improv it sounds like they had the most fun when he was not um making things up mid-session okay but just kind of like, well, I don't know. See, these both sound like the same. Ryan, these both sound like the same things. Tell me if you can tell the difference between these two tactics, Cal. Um, <laughs> not to shit on Ryan or anything. Ryan. Um, he would just make things up as he goes, and we'd move from there. Okay, that's scenario one. Scenario two, he writes things up mid-session. That sounds like the same thing, Ryan. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean... That that is making it up as you're going, but you're just writing it down now. Yeah, which maybe that's less fun because someone's sure. getting in books and he's not just free flowing. So okay. Yeah. Okay. I'm with you. I'm with you. I'm I'm with you now, Ryan. I, I forgive your sins. Um. So the pacing is fucked when he's writing things down, according to to Mr. Brian, and I believe him. Uh, scenario three uh, is the worst outcome and by far the most common. 
Um, yeah, he would just turn whatever campaign he's running at the time into whatever show slash anime he's also watching at the time. <laughs> oh, no. Uh, our first campaign started off really fun. It was like a lot of rule of cool, which is, you know, I, I like rule of cool. Mm -hmm. um, stuff going down, uh, which is great for me personally as I am super creative. I feel like you're tooting your own horn there, Ryan. Maybe. Ryan's very creative. Ryan's very, all right, it's, it's canon, <laughs> Ryan's very creative. Um, but halfway through the first session, all of us could slowly see it's turning into an almost identical retelling of the first part of JoJo's Bizarre Adventure. <laughs> Come on! I, I don't even know... I don't... Oh, well... <laughs> but ham on. Yeah, it's a it's an ancient Far East breathing technique to channel energy. You can kill vampires with your punches. I mean, I probably could. I'm very strong. I'm not I'm not as creative <laughs> as you, Ryan. <laughs> the only difference is none of us were the main cast. Our DM would always have his own DM PC that always turned out to be the main character. <gasps> <laughs> oh, man. And would constantly steal the thunder of all the hard work of the party. Did you just kill a strong demon? Well, it survives with one hit point, and then the DMPC monologues a little bit before killing it with a rapier. It's World of Warcraft storytelling. Yeah, Thrall's gonna come in. Thrall's and... gonna show up with his sky laser beam or something, or have a cutscene, or... Yeah, that's, that's frustrating. That's, <laughs> like, the most frustrating thing. I'm going to try it on you guys. We'll see how it goes. <laughs> no. Uh, just kill the big bad evil guy. Same thing happens. Just died. It's okay. The DM has some characters that complement his DMPC. So you can just use one of those. This was a running theme in every other campaign. We had one that started off like how to train your dragon before eventually turning into like H-O-T-Y-D. Do I know what that is? H-O-T-Y-D. Is, is that an anime? Wait, what? H-O-T-Y-D. Turn, before turning into... A H O T Y D. How to train your dragon. Oh, okay. I get hold on with you. <laughs> oh boy. I was like H O T Y. Is this a pop culture reference we're not getting? Pop yeah. Culture no. Animes? Is that an animes? So I get what he's saying here. This would be a running theme in every other campaign. We had one that started off and we're like, is this how to train your dragon? And then by the time they started playing with the DM a little bit, they're like, this is definitely how to train your dragon. And then also some giant space mech anime hybrid where all the dragons were like morphed and glued together into like one giant galaxy sized dragon. D they I wonder if that dragon pierces the heavens. I don't know, is that an anime reference? That is an anime reference. Um, Just yeah. doesn't watch anime, and I watch a lot of anime. I don't have anything against <laughs> it, like, not on its face. I just, um... You just didn't want... You were too busy. I, yeah, I was busy... Working making, out. ...making bad videos on the internet. <laughs> uh, they were all level four when they had to fight one giant galaxy-sized dragon. <laughs> I'm assuming they didn't fight the dragon. I'm betting <laughs> the totally DMC. not Kamina and Simone from Gurren Lagan showed up to, to fight them in, a, in an equally sized robot. Galaxy sized. Yeah. That, that's just what happens in an anime. It's okay. It's... Kamina and Simon are going to bust up the, the, the show. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, you got it. That was my story. It was pretty good with Ryan. You made me laugh a lot. Uh, uh, so I've actually played in a campaign like that. Oh. Briefly. It ended. It was a 3.5 campaign, and every time we thought we were going to do something cool, we were way too low of level. We were, like, level 2, and we'd be like, oh, this, like, this, like, young baby dragon is starting to come after us. And our guide, who was taking us to town, would show up and be like, I'll fight them off and, like, push us through the gate, and we'd see the gate close. And then we got to go, you know, fight a pickpocket or something. Ugh. Yeah, no, it was always, like, there was always something cooler happening that we never got to do. And then when we did get to do it, somebody else would show up and... It's uh, It was like a video game kind of storytelling, and it's D&D &D is not a video game. No. I feel like there's a subversive way that you could take that and make that really fun, though. Like, you think, like, there's going to be this cool, badass DMPC, and then they just fail. <laughs> and you're like, no, you actually do have to fight the uh, galaxy-sized dragon anime mech. <laughs> uh, uh, yeah, the I think I, as a player, often almost, like, want... You know, like, I, I cling to, you know, the DM will be like, here's this awesome, cool paladin dude who's helping you out. And I'm like, oh, 
this guy's gonna really help us in this next battle. And then Jesse will be like, he's really old and he retires. Bye. And I'm like, crap, I have to solve the mystery <laughs> now? What am I? <sighs> On the one hand, you're like, I kind of want that help. But then the DM sometimes will be like, I'm gonna give him that help. And then you don't want that. Yeah. I wouldn't want that cool paladin dude to help me then. So it's like a... It becomes DM solitaire at a certain point, I think. Like if you're, if you're throwing too much of that at it. Anyway, that was that one. Uh, yeah, yeah. That, that, does, that sounds like those campaigns end pretty fast. I think so. I mean, if if you have to fight the Galaxy Dragon at level four, I mean, there's there's probably not a whole lot of point to getting to level five. You know, that, that screws up your stakes too. Like, you know, we probably play tabletops. Do you play tabletop for this reason? I like to play tabletops to construct a fun narrative about our fun characters that we came up with. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, if it's a if it's a I mean, D and D's narrative based, so you have to. It's not a war game. No. Right, we're not playing a war. We're not playing Warhammer out here, where it's like, yeah, I want to have my Archon versus my Big Brother Choppa Man, or so. I don't know all of the. I feel like that's offensive to <laughs> um, Big Brother Choppa Man's. <laughs> the oh, boys. It's already be like a Choppa Boys. Choppa Boys. Yeah, I, you you could do the Cockney accent. All the orcs in Warhammer talk with. Oh yeah, them. I do a really good Cockney accent, really. Yeah, I'm like, Choppa Boy. You should read me a, a, a story. So this next story uh, is one of the ones sent in by Jen. Jen sent in a bunch of really good stories, actually. Nice. And one of them I'm not going to read because I felt like it was just picking on this really, like, well-meaning person who sort of, like, got mocked and ridiculed a lot. <laughs> I, well, I want to hear that one. <laughs> I, I can pull it up here. You, you'll find it actually pretty funny. Uh, so this was a... a, a, a more of a warning, I guess. Ooh. So they had a, a, a new friend of theirs, Jason, offered to DM a game. Uh, and they proudly came up with a homebrewed magical item that he was sure nobody could tease him about. Oh, shit. A flute. <laughs> made of bone. Man. <laughs> right out the gate with a boner flute. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so it was... Yes, it was a bone flute. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And he also wouldn't tell us what it did. <laughs> Which meant experimentation was on the menu. <laughs> I put it in my mouth. So, we fingered the bone flute. Sure, you stick your... Yep. We pressed our lips to the bone flute. Mm -hmm. We polished it. Okay. Rubbed it. <laughs> yep. Stroked it. Wow. And it was when I blew in the bone flute that the DM finally broke and told us what it was supposed to do. I don't even remember what it was in the end. It was just something like some still. <laughs> you don't remember that stuff, right? Like <laughs> no, it, it, it's because it's not about the destination; it's about the journey. But man, the journey it, is PG thirteen at, at best. <laughs> I mean, it's the. I don't think anyone would have cared if the DM had just been like, "Oh, here's this bone flute, you guys," and they go, "Oh, cool! What's this magic bone flute do?" But if you're like, "Hey." nobody can, I'm going to make an item, like, you guys can't make a sex joke or make fun of this item, oh, and man. then you hand, we've all done that, though. I mean, you can't hand anything to my wife uh, <laughs> and expect it to be taken seriously at all. Oh, your family is, de is dead. And she's like, cool, I turned into a Bigfoot. It's true. But that's an actual thing that my actual wife does to me. Turns into a taco cart vendor. She turns into a... Uh, Cal's character, I don't know if Cal actually hates Ralvaro. I genuinely dislike Ralvaro quite a <laughs> He murders dogs in the street. You asked him to do it. Well, uh, no, you didn't. Your no, character didn't. Nobody asked him to. I think so. I think somebody did. Somebody said get him hot dogs. And he doesn't know what they are because he's Those Guido Sarducci. Yeah, he is Guido Sarducci. And it's Guido Sarducci would know what a hot dog is. Well, this isn't actually Guido Sarducci guy. Famous SNL character. I, I mean, that or was he. Was he? Was he SNL? Or, yeah, he was SNL. He's, yeah, it was that that same group of people. Um, we're dating ourselves. Some of these people. Don't even... everyone knows what Saturday Night Live is? Do they? Yeah. Okay. I feel like that's people like. I still watch it. It's. Is it good still? I haven't. It's never been great. I just watch the internet now. Yeah, you watch the funny. You watch the funny clips that pop. Yeah. Oh, here's the the the, the funniest thirty seconds of last night's SNL. Yeah. Okay. Uh, should I read you a story now? Yeah. Let's get a good one. Here. It's. I mean, it's, it's gonna. It, I. I picked it, so it's gonna be sad. Um. <laughs> it's always fun in games until Jesse makes it sad. Yeah. You know, it's funny. Oh, my. This is not related, but my new one shot is. Uh, 50% less potentially sad than my last one. Really? Because the last one was all sad. Yeah, well, I mean, it's even sad, like, if you get the happy ending, you're like, that was melancholy. 
can, yep, we're not gonna do that one. That one is boring. Making a new one shot? And you guys are gonna play through it very soon in my campaign. Oh, You're gonna, and that's why I'm like, mm. can't tell me anything about it. Cause... Yeah, but it's I think it's really magical and it's, it's the coolest thing I've ever made. Okay, this is from CJ. Uh, CJ says, I'm not sure if this one is funny or tragic, but here goes. Uh, trigger warning. Yeah, trigger warning. Oh. Right out, right out the gate. Removal of organs, torture, oh. scars. And other items. So if, if if other items is one of your triggers. <laughs> I, listen, when you make a trigger warning, other cannot be <laughs> one of the... It's like how Netflix, one of like the, the advisories they'll have is like, rated this for fear. What? I'm afraid of... I mean, I'm afraid of lame things. I mean, grasshoppers. Yeah. I don't like grasshoppers. Like, is it fear because this character gets really sad that they haven't been great in life? Like, mm. I'm, I'm afraid of that. Oh, existential. I don't want to see anything existential but existential fear. Dread. Is um, that nope. a Netflix? Make it so Netflix. Please do not Netflix because <laughs> my wife will watch it and I'll be like, I'm going to just play on Facebook. It's a genre. I'm going to fight people about politics. Other items. <laughs> other items. So yeah, trigger warning, other items. <laughs> uh, a little context. I had been playing with this group for about nine months or so. Um, and we've been getting along really well. Um, I was the only non-binary and femme presenting person in the group at the time. We had a druid, which was me, the, the, the OP, a sorcerer, a bard, a uh, paladin. That's a lot of charisma. Sorcerer, bard, paladin. No one's failing any like conversation checks in that party. I mean, you could be a charismaless paladin, just all strength. Just I mean, I, that's that's like me in real life. Um, and a, and our DM. Uh, a warlock. DM was playing a warlock. I probably read that wrong. Maybe they like swapped and had a guest DM come in and they played. And so then... the warlock, yeah. Okay, so the, D, the 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 forever DM gets to like jump in here, right? And okay, that makes sense. And then like yeah, the paladin, who's normally the paladin, was was guest DMing. We'd been playing for about nine months, and our regular DM needed a break, so our paladin uh, guest DM'd for us. So we got it right. Yeah, it took us a while. We had to like stumble over that sentence for a solid we five just, minutes. We should have just kept reading. Should have kept reading. So our paladin uh, guest DM'd for us and offered to run a couple of one shots based around the holidays. Nice, right? Holidays. Um, this particular story involves a Christmas one shot. So our characters from the regular campaign were magically brought to this Christmas world where we had to save Santa. I love it. I yeah. want to play this. Really? Maybe I do. Yeah, maybe. I, we'll see. We'll keep going. Um, <laughs> yeah, it, the, the I can make this soon. <laughs> Everything was going well. We were searching for Santa, and suddenly we found a forest that wasn't covered in snow. Uh, a little suspicious, right? But there can't be snow all the time, so we're making our way through, and we find a small lake with a stone on an island in the middle of it. We're all curious. So my character, Heya, the druid uh, goes to check it out. Did you turn into a water thing and do that? I hope you did. There's an inscription on the stone. Oh, I'm sorry. It's like, turn into just dog. Just <laughs> <laughs> Listen, a golden retriever can like probably swim good. I don't actually know. I was gonna be like, yeah, a golden retriever can swim like a shark. Internet. And then that'll show up on your mom's Facebook feed. <laughs> golden retriever out swims shark. Anyway, sorry. Uh, there's an inscription on the stone that says to save the forest. You must place your hand upon me. Um, that was paraphrased. Um, it had been established before that the forest in this world was in trouble, so Heia, the druid, places her hand on the stone. You think that was a good idea? I would... Yeah, I mean... If it's in character, she's a druid. Yeah, I mean, a druid, you see that? I mean, maybe you're just like, yeah, whatever, I'm going along with everything. I don't have a good wisdom score, and I rolled a three on my insight. I'm going to put my hand on the stone. Spoiler alert, that was a bad idea. A demon appears and traps Heia against the stone and says that if she doesn't come with him, he will kill the party. A giant toad-like creature emerges from the lake and grabs a party member, almost eating it. So Heia agrees to go with the demon. Took in, took in one for the team. Wow. Yep. English is not my first language, so you'll have to bear with me. I'm just like, oh, that's, this sounds like a pretty intense situation. Yeah, no, it's, it's a holiday story. You know, this demons is... and giant frogs. and Yeah, like, was it a Krampus demon? Because that's the only demon you're allowed to have at holidays other than Santa. It's true. Here's where it gets really bad for Heia. Uh, she is trapped in the astral plane for a thousand years. So three minutes in our time. Three, <laughs> three minutes in our time, a thousand years in D&D &D time. Um, she's tortured brutally the entire time. 
And when the thousand years is up, she is changed. Her entire body, from the neck down, is covered in scars. Half of her hair was ripped out and would never grow back again. Uh, one hand was cut off and replaced with a demon hand. And her uterus has been torn from her body. Wait, so this character was playing the druid? Uh, the, this per the writer, the person the, who wrote uh, this. Yeah, our, our, our writer, our person here is playing the druid. And this happened to our, our writer in the Christmas uh, story. <laughs> What? The true meaning of Christmas is uh, is forcefully removed uteruses. Um, uteri? All of this leads to some bad places for Heia, which I won't get into here, which is nice, because if, if you were able to get into all of that... And yeah, get... that's the nice stuff. I don't know. <laughs> I don't need to go further. Or Yeah, I know. Yeah, well, that's intense. But the worst part of it was I had absolutely no warning that this was going to happen. The guest DM completely blindsided the entire party with that. Oh, okay. Yeah, no. Then the regular DM tried to say that this wasn't canon in the campaign, and the guest DM, the paladin, came back with, Yes, it is. Everything is canon in the original campaign. So that's one of the D&D stories that I tell on occasion. See you, Internet. Love, CJ. That's a... <laughs> yeah, I mean, what? I don't know. I, I don't know. I, like that's a that's that's a sexually frustrated person, right? Oh, your uterus is fucked. I mean, I feel like that's one of those. You know, it sounds like the regular DM was like, "What? No, no, that's not what is we're doing. That's not the this can like." It sounds like that's just not that campaign they're playing. No, this is a Christmas story, Cal. I mean, <laughs> listen, Christmas is an intense time of year. Every every D and D game I play in, we have that like before we start, sort of like you know, DM will ask each person. Maybe like you know, publicly we'll have a discussion or a one on one with each player, being like, "Hey, what are some things that you don't want to see in your game?" Right, and like one of them for me is no big unexpected like character is suddenly maimed and mutilated and all these horrible things happen to them and I don't have any way to respond and stop it from happening. Like, you know, complete loss of agency is a really big thing for me. So, you know, I've had friends who this has happened to. They're like, oh, this enemy just runs up and crits my character and they're dead, but now they're enslaved to a demon. The DM never rolled a single dice. And you're like, you know, like I feel really sorry. <laughs> that, that's a hor this is a horrible one. How much fun do you think that that uh, the guest DM's paladin was? I bet you that is the most stick in the mud, crappy, judgy, like lawful, stupid paladin anyone's ever seen. I I have to kill him. It is my prerogative. It is my oath. Yeah, or maybe this maybe this person has a real grudge against the our druid. Maybe as a person or a character. Or a character. And they were insistent that like Ugh, this they get their comeuppance and I can't I'm gonna say that's not justified or warranted under any circumstance. No. Uh, just given the the nature of playing D and D with someone for nine months, you yeah. I mean that's that's just so telling. Like I I could sit around trying to think of something awful for a long time, and of all of the crappy things I could come up with. Um, the any of that would probably not be on the list because that's also just not fun to listen to. So sorry, internet. <laughs> um, anyway, that's a bummer one, but it also makes for a good story. So thank you, CJ. Yeah. I, I think the takeaway is never trust paladins. Never. Never. <laughs> never trust a paladin. Yeah. Ever. Yeah. All they're going to do, you can trust them to do one thing. Christmas. <laughs> <laughs> I was gonna say smite. Smite. Oh, yeah. Sorry, <laughs> that too. <laughs> As a paladin, you can always trust a paladin to do Christmas. Christmas. <laughs> What's that paladin worse? He's a vengeance paladin. Well, Christmas. Oh man, the candy canes are gonna be all up in you. What about an oathbreaker paladin? Do oathbreaker, do oathbreaker paladins celebrate Christmas? All of their wreaths look like U's. Because <laughs> they break. They're Smiles. twisted. I don't know. Pretzels. I was really reaching. Don't <laughs> Jesse edit that out later, please. <laughs> Funny. Do you want to give us a palate cleanser? A paladin cleanser? I could. Was that all of our stories? I don't remember. 
I told the P the the bone flute and the uh, the, uh, the 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 TPK with the 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 wild mage. Oh, that's wild right. Forcer. I love the wild magic stuff. I I really hate it. You really? Well, <laughs> here's a, I can. That's it's on the DM, kids. It's on the DM to make wild magic freaking fun. I would be asking for that wild magic dice on like so all the time. The best, I think, my favorite is if uh, I got to plug Dimension Twenty. Oh. Uh, uh, they they did it where uh, every time the wild magic sorcerer rolls and doesn't cause a wild magic surge, the next uh, the next time they roll, the check goes up each time. Yes, yes. So, so give me that. you it don't roll the one; up. it's a two, and so it keeps going up, and eventually it will trigger because most of them are nothing. Yeah. Like a, 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 a unicorn runs around uh, over there. Yeah, or like you're covered in honey. <laughs> I think I don't think that's it. Probably is one. I would They're so lame. I would rather <laughs> self detonate in real life than be covered in honey. Re really? Yeah, I think so. I think I would rather burn to death. That would be so sticky and awful. <laughs> And I don't want that ever. I would rather self-detonate than be covered in... Whoa, that's the hottest take of the evening. <laughs> <laughs> I really don't like to be sticky. Uh, I don't even like to use suntan lotion and burn a lot. So, uh, 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 this is uh, also Jen had this one. Oh, Jen. Jen's a good uh, source. Jen, Jen, Jen's, got, Jen's got a fun... Jen, Jen's got a, is a, is a... Jen is a pretty solid writer here. Very genuine. Uh, Great with words, actually. Re really, there's some good sections in some of these. Uh, so this one, uh, the, uh, and I'm sorry if we're picking on this player because he seems like actually a pretty okay. They haven't played so. Uh, the, the, the Jen stories all take place back in uh, the '90s. So oh, they're wow. playing Second Edition. That's uh, awesome. Second Edition is a wild game that's pretty boring. Hot take. Is it boring? Uh, it's. You've played Second Edition. I was 12, 13. Oh my gosh, you had way more patience as a 12 or 13 year old. Uh, we didn't get far. All right, this is about a a, 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 a problem player. It's not. Uh, so the main thing you need to know about uh, this guy first. All right, so th this car this person, they call him Nathan. It's, it's not his name, so. Uh, Nathan was clearly working out some stuff with his characters because they inevitably ran along the same lines a reluctant vampire who had pledged his life to eradicating the evil that created him. Albino and with glowing red eyes, <laughs> he was nonetheless strangely attractive to women. This was actually something in, he would include in his bio. He always wore an anachronistic swoopy black trench coat. Extra points uh, were spent on this <laughs> so that the DM would allow it. Uh, which wow. if it was second, if it was in the 90s, I don't think they may have been playing D&D then. I don't know. Uh, he carried a broken sword sure. that was etched up and down and whatever blade was left, uh, uh, it, it had runes that crackled with arcane energy. This is in the 90s, by the way, so I want you to remember, he had the long black coat and like, the like this dude was pre-Neo. I was gonna say, like, this is quintessential 90s kind of awesome. Though oh I, yeah, that is true, he is. I would've uh, thought he was great. I'd been, honestly, in the 90s, I would've played the same freaking character. Yeah, he's attractive to women and he's tall and he has really good skin <laughs> and, uh, so, <laughs> Sorry. was the recovery of the rest of the blades something he ever wanted to pursue? No. No. Oh, okay. <laughs> he just was, had a broken just a, magic sword. It was, it was just a tchotchke for him. <laughs> <Just, laughs> this character always had the same name. Nathaniel Worm. W-Y-R-M. W-Y-R, sure, why not? Always. And he was incapable of perceiving shades of nuance in any given situation. He just wanted to kill evil stuff and pretty much ignore everything else. But the trick with him was that he was actually a really naturally loving and kind guy. Sure. So, you, but you, to get him to RP, you eventually had to just get him to end up caring about your character. But he really hated RPing. Uh, uh, <laughs> I have friends like that. Yeah, I I have friends like that. Um, I, I kind of do that. Like I'm a pretty affable guy, right, Cal? Yeah. I'm yeah. Likeable. You seem like you get into the RP. Do you not? I love to get into the RP. Uh, he he knows this because he watched my stream the other day. <laughs> um, I, I I actually tend to play like kind of troubled characters too because I think like ha having flaws is fun, right? So do you always feel that all your characters just sort of end up being the same person over and over again? No, but they do end up. My characters always end up having like um, they're always way more direct than I would ever be in real life, unless I'm yelling at somebody on the internet. Um, but like they're they're always like I, I basically RP my wife. 
I just, <laughs> it's just, there's no holding back. I just say what's on my mind. Jesse in real life would never do that, but all my other characters do. All my characters end up being the same person, too. I never have a tragic backstory. I'm just like a whatever guy who's not great at something, who gets wrapped up and gets really obsessed with things. Way too into lore. I love that you're so Apocrypha. Boring. It's you're... all the same it's all the same character. You're fun so, to play with, it's fine. Through here. So anyway, our party was attempting to escape to an underground lair after having gone toe to toe with a baby dragon and barely escaped, reasonably intact. Nobody really had any HP left or spells except Ooh. Nathan, who I believe downed a couple of potions. Anyway, we had to go out of the way we came in, which was to cross a broad chasm with a rope bridge. Unfortunately, as we approached the bridge, an array of enemies showed up on the far side, bows and arrows at the ready. What did Nathan do? We determined the best thing to do was to get some distance away and climb down into the chasm and hope we'd go undetected long enough for a short rest and then we might have the wherewithal to either sneak out past the enemy or, with any luck, fight our way through. Nathan, however, had a master plan. <laughs> he would, and I quote, swoop across the chasm with his vampiric flight ability and distract the enemy by attacking them and the rest of us could sneak by. Sure. So, yeah, he, he's doing like the, the, I've been troubled this whole time, but now I'm going to sacrifice myself for the greater good. Yeah, if I was a DM, I'd be like, you don't have vampiric flight. <laughs> Thing is, he wasn't really va he wasn't really a vampire. <laughs> yes. Just a mock-up that the DM had allowed because it was him, right? He was just the thing you allowed with your friend. He wanted to be cool, so you let him be cool. Yeah. Cool and DM, too. He also couldn't fly. <laughs> yes! Uh, so apparently they were playing with some kind of like points. You can buy like cool looks and stuff with points and extra stuff. Um, if you guys know what system that is, uh, keep it to yourselves. So. No, I'm telling you. Can <laughs> put it in the comments, uh, please. Uh, uh, he'd spent so many points on his glowing red eyes and his trench coat and his shape-shifting <laughs> that by the time he got to flight, he couldn't really afford that he could hover. The DM tried to remind him of this, but Nathan was dead set on this course of action because it would be so cool. And our DM was always willing to let you hoist yourself on your own petard. Okay. Uh, I actually am, oh, I, I love that when you're like, I'm going to do this dumb thing. And the DM's like, I need to remind you of a few mechanical things <laughs> that will cause you to die if you do that. Is that the move? Is that, because like, I think, I think like if you're about to lose your character, the DM needs to jump in, right? So if, let's say, you know, like, I'm like, I'm going to jump off this balcony of this castle and try and you and, you know, and try and use uh, the bed sheet as a, a, a parachute to float down and, and you go, listen, that, that, if you try this, I will let you roll a die and you have to beat this insane check or roll a nat 20 or you fall a thousand feet. And if you go, and if I'm like, yeah, yeah, okay, let me do this. There you go, okay. right? Like, you know, you, you give somebody enough. Uh, a, a great example a friend of mine always loves to point to for this is uh, is, is that famous critical role scene I near the very that. end of campaign one. Spoiler alert. Spoiler alert for when someone jumps off of a 3,000 foot cliff and, <laughs> and, and, and Matt Mercer goes, so you're going to fall and land on rocks if you don't do anything. And... The player's like, yeah, I know. And DM goes, cool, let me roll a billion dice because he took the cap off of how far you could fall. Yep. And you know what? You can't even be mad then. You no. know, like, we, we've all done those dumb plays. Epic moment, though. Is there more? Oh, there is. Oh, keep it going. So, Sorry. Yeah, so, uh, uh, so then they climbed down in the chasm and they're ready to come back up and they got their teamwork going. And then Nathan began his swoop. Remember, he wants to swoop wants to in. Swoop. And even given all the rest and rest of the handicaps of this maneuver, the DM was still willing to allow it if he rolled well. That's a good DM. He didn't. Oh, shit. <laughs> Remember, he has a hover. So, uh, And so we watched as Nathan's character leapt into the air and hung there. Just, just in the middle of the cavern. Just, <laughs> as they say, like a Macy's Thanksgiving balloon, slowly <laughs> drifting across the chasm while the enemy took pot shot after pot shot, and our favorite quasi vampire begin to look like a pig, a por like a, just a, a porcupine. Nice. Uh, a porky pig. Uh, I just really like those fun stories of people being like, I tried this amazing thing, and you're like, and you nat 20 didn't they? Like, I rolled a seven. <laughs> You know, a cool seven fell a thousand feet, got shot by a bunch of arrows. He doesn't die, by the way. Oh, wow, he, he lives. They, everyone saves him, I guess. 
that's a nice nice party. I, I, I clearly Nathaniel Worms player was a decent dude because if if I had a crappy person that I was playing with and they did some like Batman crap like that and then failed, I would just let them die. That's a great story. I'm more fixated on just like his adoption of like I am the crow, I am Blade, <laughs> I am Neo, and a little bit Uncle Fester. <laughs> Cal, I had fun reading stories with you. Yeah, we uh, we said a lot of nonsense. We did. I mean, that's all. We're here for the nonsense. I, th I feel like our our, our uh, cherished viewers are here for the nonsense. Uh, if you want to see more Cal, me maybe. <laughs> uh, come on over. Um, let me know in the comments below. Um, thank you so much for watching, Cal. You want to say anything? <laughs> thanks for also. Thanks for having me. Yeah, I, I like hanging out with you. You're just one of my friends, so this is a good excuse for me to like talk about other people's D and D drama. S send more. Tell people your stories. Tell, tell. Yeah, I have more stories. We just we didn't have the time to read. There were a lot of them. Sent. So many. You did a good job. Thank you for that. Uh, Cal, thanks for being here, buddy. Thanks for having me. All right. Do you want to plug anything you're doing? Um. You can say no. Vote. Okay. Sure. Yeah. We need to do that. Vote for higher taxes so that we can fight wildfires in the American Northwest. So we're ending on a, on a cheerful and light note. Thank you, Cal. You're the best. Y'all, I love you very much. Uh, I got you, the plug. I don't know. You have like a YouTube. I have no... I don't. I don't have anything. I have nothing to plug. He's got a YouTube. He's got a Twitter. <laughs> <laughs> he doesn't know about his Twitter, but he's got one. Um... Alright, love you guys. Be nice to each other. Bye.